here with a new HT, and I thought I'd check this out. This is by the Alliance. Alliance. It's a uh, by Redivus. It's one of their models. And I really like this thing because it has a nice, uh, like hard plastic feeling. Like it feels like it's going to be pretty sturdy. It's just kind of easy to do. You don't need some crazy software like some of my radios, some of my HTs, my preferred two HTs. You have to buy their software and then have a special cable and it like it adds up real fast. It gets expensive and it's kind of clunky. This is a little bit more modern. I haven't looked at their software yet, so we'll take a look at that. I am pretty happy with the handheld just from playing around with it. So let's go ahead and look at the box. In the box, you do have the HT, if I can get it open. Uh, it comes with a, you know, a little manual. And then if you remove all this stuff, you have a brick, you have a clip, and then you have a charging cradle and a USB-A to USB-C cable. So I'm gonna move all this out of the way here. And let's just talk about this radio real fast. You know, it's not like a toy radio. It's not like a, a certain Chinese brand. You know, this thing's clearly designed to be kind of tough. Like, I don't mind dropping it. I wouldn't drop it from really far on purpose, but it does give me some confidence that it is pretty well made. Now, this is IP67 rated. It is fully dustproof. It is fully waterproof. It'll do submersion up to one meter for 30 minutes, which is pretty cool. This claims it'll do up to 10 watts of output on VHF and UHF. I don't have a way of measuring that, but that's pretty high for a handheld. Mind you, that's going to drink your battery down like pretty stinking fast, but that's cool that it can do that. And it does have dual band operation for the common amateur frequency, so you can do UHF, VHF on it. This does have FPP UV band GPS APR, which is kind of a nice feature, especially if you do something like Skywarn, where APRS is pretty important so that people can know where you are. You don't want to go missing in a storm or something and then people not be able to come find you. So knowing your last location is a pretty nifty thing. This does supposedly have Bluetooth app programming, so we will check that out. You can do channel setup zones, all that stuff on there. It has a 2800 milliamp hour battery, so you're gonna get a nice little bit of time out of it. The front screen here, we can take a look at. Nice in color, looks pretty good. Has, um, it just looks nice and it's pretty simple and you actually have a menu button so you can go into the menu there and see things. It's not convoluted like some older HTs where it's like, okay, press VF, now press two, now hold VF, now do this. And it's, it's much easier to navigate and I really do appreciate that. It does have NOAA bands built in so you can listen to weather alert. So this is good, you know, if you just wanted APRS without an, um, an external tracker or something. If you just wanted to take this backpacking off grid, you know, just so you had a way to hit the bands, just in case you needed to. It, it feels really rugged and doesn't feel like a hobby radio. My other HT, which we're gonna use to test this, just feels kind of uh, fragile. Is, is a good way to say it. Unfortunately out here, there's not a lot of places where I can use this just to talk to people. I'm way out of range of a repeater. There's actually a monument in the way. If I take a piece of PVC that I have over here that I have a J-pull on and I hold that thing like above my head, like I'm trying to catch lightning and <laughs> yeah, then I can barely trip the repeater, but they can't hear me. Uh, I can hear them fine, but just terrain. I live in Monument Valley and we've got giant rocks that get pretty tall in, in the way. And their repeater's actually pretty far away. Fortunately, my wife is licensed. She doesn't want to appear on camera or even in voice for the video. So I have a way that I'm going to, I'm going to go call CQ on my other radio. And if we just happen to pick it up on this radio, there we go. It's priced really aggressive and they do have, I think like um, volume discounts. I believe that's what I saw. If you buy like four or something, then they like, get really, really affordable. It's a pretty cool radio. So first let's go ahead and do um, do a listen. There we go, we're on. We'll set that there. I'm gonna take my microphone off so it doesn't get out of range. CQ, CQ, this is Kilo Dine, Tiger Whiskey Charlie calling CQ. I'm a little, and if you're here on vacation, I'd love to have a chat. Unfortunately, on my little break there with the uh, other HT, I called CQ and no one was listening, but back to talking about this, let's go ahead and get the app set up and stuff. Before I go ahead and do the Bluetooth, I will show you that this does have uh, FM radio and weather. I don't know any of the stations out here because we've only lived here six months and who listens to terrestrial radio, but that's pretty cool. Uh, 
So it looks like they do have a Bluetooth thing here. I've installed Redivus's app. I'm just going through the screens. Allow Ad Radio, Alliance HA2 right at the top. Let me show you that actually. So you do, if I quit pressing it. So it shows the radio, it looks like three other radios work in here, but this is the HA2, which is what we have. So it says not connected. I'm gonna go to the Bluetooth. We're gonna hit select, and I'm just figuring out how to do that on the thing here. There we go. Let me show you that. So if you come into the settings on the Bluetooth, then you can go to Bluetooth power, the menu button. We're gonna go ahead and turn it on, select. It's initializing, and let's see there. Search again. There we go. I didn't even read the instructions. And we'll click on that. So we've clicked on that. We're gonna go ahead and click add device. Thinking about it, radio connected. Now, what can I do here? So it shows the radio connected. We'll go in there. So I can go ahead and read the data. So we'll read the phone. I will say you can get uh, you know a data cable to do this in the PC too. I do have one. I believe it's optional with some packages, so pay attention to that if that's what you want. But I'm really happy to be able to do it here on my phone. Like, welcome to the 21st century. Thank you. Okay, cool. So yeah, we'll just kind of go through the menu here. Oh wow, yeah, you've got quite a bit of settings in here. I'm I'm really really into this. And then yeah, I can set up my channels all that stuff on there, signaling, so I got DMTF settings, uh, settings for the emergency, for the FM radio, I can set presets, that's pretty handy. I should look up radio stations here and go ahead and save those. Um, note to editor Ryan, do that. And then we can turn our GLONASS on and off, and then our APRS, which is also doing GPS, let me turn that on and off, pretty cool. And then we'll just save the data. Let me mm, let me change something and we'll go ahead and save the data. Okay, here we go. In the display mode, you can set name or number. I'm gonna put display mode as channel name and we'll go ahead and write that data. Let me grab the HT2. So we're gonna click write data. There we go, it's writing. It shows it's writing on the device. Gosh, I love this thing. Why, why can't the big manufacturers do something like this? They will, and it'll take them 10 years to do it because, you know, that is just so convenient. Redivis is really starting to impress me. I have some of their non-amateur band radios. Um, they actually sent me both of those, and they're pretty interesting too. That is perfect. It just, ugh. it's an HT that works, right? I'm gonna go back into the menu here. Let's go ahead and find, oh yeah, you have your APRS and your GLONASS and stuff in there too. Supposedly it has a digital compass, but I've never found those work good even like on the iPhone. Let's go into a weather. So you can set up a weather alarm if you want and then select your NOAA channel. I'm gonna go in here and try to figure out how to get to the NOAA channels real fast. And we'll take a listen. And you can see here, it shows that the Bluetooth is connected and I'm connected to my phone. Um, I'll turn that Bluetooth off when I'm done, but for now, we'll just go ahead and leave that. Let me go ahead and find the uh, weather. Well, while I'm doing that, I figured out that if you uh, long press, then you do whatever the secondary function is. So for like squelch, We'll long press and then we can come into the squelch menu. So that's pretty cool. I'm gonna consult the manual here to try and figure out the weather because I don't wanna be looking for it all day. The manual is actually pretty nice. It's very short, but it gets to the point. Like, you know, it just, it really gets to the point. So I'm gonna look for this real fast. Oh, so this is pretty cool. It can actually receive aviation frequencies from 108 to 135.975 megahertz. That's kind of cool. I We don't get a lot of planes that fly over here, but it might be interesting to scan that someday and just see what I can pick up. Okay, here we go. Listen to NOAA channels. Long press menu, it will display the 12 NOAA channels in the standby interface. Select a channel. So long press menu. Now that we're all deaf,
I may not actually pick up any of the NOAA channels here. I'm going to go outside real fast and see if maybe the garage door is blocking them. But I guess I've never really looked that up. I'll do a Google search real fast too and see if I can find out what ones cover this area. Again, we have monuments there. There's a giant one right there too. So, you know, I could be having this signal blocked. So it might not be the best for my use here, but you're probably not going to have giant rocks. <laughs> and uh, we have a volcanic plug down the road. Um, it's called El Capitan uh, locally. It's got another name, a a Agatha, Agatha something. But yeah, we just live in a weird area. So let me go test that outside real fast. I realized something here. We do have a metal roof. And if I do go outside, I do get NOAA 1. I have to go a couple feet out the front door and then hold it about here and I do. So I'm gonna change the antenna, the rubber duct that it came with. I'm gonna turn it off first so we don't accidentally transmit on something. Although on NOAA channels, we wouldn't have. I'm gonna put a better antenna that I prefer to use on my HDs. The rubber duct would be fine in most cases. But I wanna see if I can get the NOAA actually inside here. So we're just gonna put that on. You know, it's a... Uh, one of these nice little ones I have and it, it collapses. Uh, at my last house, I had to use one of these to actually be able to, to, oh, <laughs> to hit a repeater because again, we had terrain, we had a hill in the way. So I'm gonna turn this back on. It looks like I have to go back into weather each time you turn it off, good to know. Yeah, so I just don't. I don't pick up Noah in here. Again, you know, the garage door is right here. The roof is metal. Keep that in mind if you can't pick up the weather. Again, 90% of the people watching us aren't gonna live as rural as I do. And like I said, even outside, it was kind of staticky. And that's not a fault of the radio. That's just terrain. Oh, we don't really ever have severe weather here. We have had two tornadoes in the county in the six months we've lived here, five months we've lived here. It's kind of rare, but the county's also freaking huge. Actually, the guy right across the street got really good footage of one of the tornadoes when he was somewhere uh, a little bit north of us, about a half hour north of us. It was on the ground for like an hour or something. It wasn't crazy powerful, it was like an F1, but coming from the Midwest where I used to do Skywarn and stuff, you know, <laughs> pretty, pretty, pretty cool. I, I really like this thing. And that rubber duck was fine too, but I actually kind of like the way that looks on it. Uh, it's a nice little, I just, I love these antennas. I have like three or four of these for my HTs. And I have a different brand too. Um, I actually forget who made this one. I know. If you know in the comments, you can probably tell by how it's wrapped. The other one's wrapped a little bit different, but I, I keep these in like my radio go bag and on my couple of my HTs and stuff. I The HT I just took this off of, uh, my wife and I both have one because I wanted to keep our radios the same. So I'm probably going to pick up another one of these because that's a really nice radio. And like, it's tough. You know, once I screw this on, it'll be nice. And it has like a lug over here so you could like do like a lanyard probably or something if you didn't want the clip on the back. It does have a USB-C straight into it or it has the, uh, you know, the dock, the cradle. Um, I imagine it gets power when you can turn it on and charge it with the cradles going, which is nice if you just want to scan frequencies or something in your area. Pretty cool little radio. Got that nice little rubber duck and I, I like it. Um, maybe I'm sold on Redivus now. I'm gonna check out some of their other radios. Uh, do they make a base station? I think so. Maybe I will check that out or some other FRS or, or something. But anyway, yeah, 